ladies, welcome to lesson two. So in our first lesson, we uh, essentially figured out how to get a 3D asset from EVE Online into Tri-Exporter, uh, and then from there to Photoshop into Cinema 4D. It really wasn't too challenging. Today we're going to try to tackle something a little more interesting, and that is materials. Understanding materials is very important, so I'm going to do my best to explain them. First thing you're going to notice is inside of Tri Exporter today, I've gone back to our DX9 a model ship Minmatar Frigate 8. I'm going with the Firetail today, it's a ship I enjoy. So I've taken the GR2, uh, our good old Firetail. There it is. I've taken that, I've taken the GR2 uh, file, I've taken the DDS files associated to it, and I've also extracted the black file today. I'm not 100% sure yet on how to decipher everything in a black file, but there is some useful information in there which we'll cover. For fun, as a Brutor bonus, I've also taken the uh, Brutor Tribe DDS file and the Republic Navy DDS file and exported those all uh, accordingly. If you're not sure how to do that, take a look back at the first lesson 101 because that's uh, what we covered there. Inside of Photoshop, uh, I've done our usual thing wherein I've taken the DDS file and I have essentially opened it up using the default sizes. Load mit maps, load flip vertically are disabled and I say OK. And as always, I have my Eve Images action, which rotates the document 180 degrees and then flips it horizontally. Okay, That's really all I need from uh, this first image. This is my diffuse map, my texture map. So I saved that out as a JPEG for um, Cinema 4D. In my Channels tab, I take the Channels tab, I create a new image out of that. I save that as my alpha texture for Cinema 4D. Okay. Inside of the N map, which is our normal map, what I'm going to do here, look carefully at the channels. Okay. When we just see this thing, it's green. It's not really a very useful normal map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all from the green channel, and I'm going to paste that into the red channel. From the alpha channel, I'm going to select all, and I'm going to copy that and paste that into the green channel. Then in the blue channel, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste the color white. When I look at my RGB, that looks like a much better normal map to me. Okay, So I will save this out as a new image, and I will call that normal. Finally, same type of thing, I've opened up the PGS file. If I click on the green channel, there's my specular map for the fire tail. If I click on the alpha, there's my luminosity or my glow. It's essentially all I need there. I save that out as a JPEG for Cinema 4D. Good to go. Now for fun, I took the Brutor map and again, all I'm going to do here is click on the red channel, and I'm going to save this red channel out as a separate image, and that's going to give me a nice mask layer for later on. Okay, I can do the exact same thing with the Republic Navy pattern. So I'm going to save that out as well, and again, I'll use that later on. That's everything in Photoshop. Sorry if I went through that a bit fast, I just wanted to make sure we get to the good stuff because there's some very interesting uh, information today on materials. So if you had trouble there, good time to pause the video. If not, let's open up Cinema 4D. Okay, so this is our end result today. It's a uh, fairly nice rendered uh, Firetail, Republic Fleet Firetail, Minmatar Frigate, Faction Frigate. And it's just in a simple default scene I set up looks good to me. Uh, as with any artist, it's open to your own interpretation. You can adjust things as needed, etc, etc. This is just how I like it to look, so there we go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my 
main material. Now when you import your Firetail, if you remember from last time, when you import a model you're going to have several different textures that come in with it and it is pretty easy to identify what texture belongs to what group uh, on the polygons. So again, if you're not sure how to do that, go back to the first one because that's in there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off all these fun things we've done just to talk a little bit about texturing. So the first thing I'll do is I'm just going to show you what our basic model looks like. Okay, now I've only taken off the body texture, I've left the wing texture on, just ignore that. So here we go. This is your basic model. It has no textures applied, nothing at all. No reflectivity, no specularity, nothing. So the first thing I am going to do actually, for fun, is I'm going to apply the specularity. Now you'll see these values 60%, 160%, and 0.65%. How did I get those? Well, I actually opened up that black file we looked at. And as I look through the black file, there's some things that make sense to me, some things that don't really make sense to me. But when I get down here, I can see things like material specular curve. Okay? The values for that are 60, 160, and 0.65. So I went ahead and put those in there. 60, 160, 0.65. Okay? The only other interesting value in here is material diffuse color. Now I'm sure there's more, but these are just the two that I use for now. Uh, as well as finding out a couple of other interesting things later we'll talk about, but mostly it's just those two. So my diffuse color is RGB. It's 0.24 of full RGB. Now RGB is uh, red, green, blue. It goes from 0 to 255. Each of these values is the same, so I kind of estimated and said, what is a quarter of 255? Because 0.25 would be a quarter of 1, which would be 25% of 255. That came out to around 63. We'll deal with that number later. Okay, back to specularity. So essentially this is the shininess of something. And you can see, just like that, it's made it very shiny, but it doesn't really seem spaceshipy at all. It doesn't seem appropriate. Which is why under specular color, we have our maps and that's where I would go in and I would load the image for my specular color which was the specular map and already just by doing that you can see a, a drastic difference in the different shiny parts of our ship which is pretty exciting if I go into the normal map I can load up the normal map and again what a normal map does is it will physically displace accurately uh, it actually creates polygons and model architecture I don't know actually how to say it but it actually creates the physical bump of your ship as opposed to bump or as opposed to displacement normal maps are commonly used especially in gaming because it helps save a lot on uh, polygon count and graphic processor unit usage etc etc anyway I like normal maps normal maps are your friend uh, so here's what it looks like with normal maps that's pretty badass just like that so you've got your nice specularity going on you've got all the details from your normal map I mean right then and there you can already see this ship is looking pretty damn good now again we're fortunate because EVE Online gives us uh, the normal maps even though they made it a little complicated to get out if you're not uh, in a situation where you have normal maps available to you a program I use is called Shader Map and shader map's pretty interesting. Uh, from shader map, essentially, you can just load a color texture. And when you load a color texture, uh, regardless of what it is, I'll just go into our lesson 102 and just load that diffuse map. And it will automatically create all of the different associated maps uh, as it sees fit through its different algorithms. And from that one simple diffuse map, you can see all kinds of things in real time going on. You can load up your normal maps, you can look at pretty much anything. Um, and you can create your own and you can edit your own and it's a very inexpensive program. I think it cost me forty dollars for the professional version. This has been incredibly handy to me when I've been rendering rock. Uh, things like adding scrapes and details to his leather jacket, etc, etc. So check that out. back inside of Cinema 4D, the next thing we're going to look at is actually we're going to put the color on. Um, 
Now, what I meant to do earlier was hit undo because I had color there. So let's do that. Okay, so I have color. Take the diffusion off. Take that off. Take that off. Okay. So I'm going to load up our texture map and give it a render. Again, pretty nice. Under my diffusion channel, I put 63%. Uh, now, if you remember that 255 RGB color, it ended up being 63 out of a 255. Don't ask me how the math works. I don't know, and this may not even be right, but it uh, gave a nice result to me. You can see in the preview window, it goes from being a bit brighter to a bit darker. And when I render that out, I actually like that. I'm, I'm hoping someone is going to post something in the comments, either on my blog or on this video itself, that will help me out with the black files. Those are new from Inferno. And uh, yeah, they don't entirely make a lot of sense to me quite yet, but I'm still eyeballing it like I always have as an artist, and that's that. So, so far, what have we colored? Specular, the shininess, specular color, normal mapping, the color map and diffusion. Something else we're going to deal with today is reflection. So reflection is not how shiny your object is uh, when light hits it, it's more how shiny your object is for other things to be reflected within it. And ironically, a little tr uh, trick I learned on this is to use your color map as your reflection map. And you'll see my RGB is set to 63. I make it additive, which means it's not just a straight reflection, it keeps the texture intact. And I only go with about 10% reflectivity. If I give that a quick render, what you should see along the front here is you'll see that it's pretty shiny uh, according to the color map. The other reason it's good to use a color map for reflection is because you actually reflect colors then instead of just black and white which is always useful. So you'll see the front is very shiny. Now I don't mind that on a fire tail because to me a fire tail is a very sexy shiny ship. So there we go. We're actually almost done with uh, what this looks like. Now of course what's missing is our luminance channel. And the way I do luminance is I actually load it in as uh, an image. So in this one you'll see I have Glow 1 JPEG. Now Glow 1 JPEG is just a black and white image. And then I, sit, I hit colorize, and I saturate it as much as I can, and I've chosen 5 degrees. Now what, that, what that'll give is it gives nice red lights. Now I like that. I'm going to leave it like that. I know what you're saying, Firetail has yellow, etc., etc., but it's really easy to adjust these things. You can simply go in and just play with your light colors. So if I go to 50 degrees, now I have nice yellow might look a little more to what you prefer um, but you can play with any of these values you can you can change it into anything if you really want to you could have a nice let's say greenish blue there's a fire tail you don't see every day but that's all kinds of fun your fire tail do what you want with it okay I'm gonna put it back to the red let that render out And that essentially gets us to where we want to be right now. It doesn't take a lot. You can do this quickly and really easily. Uh, the wings are a little more challenging because you do have to deal with an alpha channel like we talked about. And I'm actually still dealing with the whole sail pattern uh, on the wing. These are called sails in, in the files and there actually is a PGS file for it and I've started just playing with those in prep for this video so I'm not entirely sure how to get that nice same sheen that you'll see on a fire tail when it passes you by uh, but it's pretty nice so I also wanted to show you a couple of bonus things I've done here so I've made these layers the first thing I did was I added my Brutor markings Okay. now I've added that as a layer in my color map but I've also done it in my specular map. And the reason I've done that is because to me, I would think that the camouflage pattern would not be as shiny uh, as, as a factory default fire tail. 
So let's just take a look at that and let it render out for a quick second. So there you go. Uh, you may like that, you may not. Personally, I actually prefer the look of the navy markings. So let's take a quick look at that. Just doesn't seem to be quite as busy to me. Okay, there you go. That looks kind of nice. And again, with your diffuse color, um, actually, you know what? We'll save that for next time. There you go. So as always, uh, thanks for participating in today's tutorial. Uh, I was going to talk about how to put the different logos on the ship, but I think I'll add that next time as well. And I'm actually going to bundle this file up and make it available to you. It's currently Cinema 4D Release 13. I haven't purchased uh, Release 14 yet. That just came out. Will be soon. Uh, but that way you can take a look at your file, compare it to mine, and hopefully it will uh, be useful to you. Thanks again, and fly strong.